I think you've had the chance to hear from me uh, speak uh, several times, but I'll reintroduce myself. I'm Brad Joya, and I teach English, and I'm headmaster here. I'll say a few things about my, more about my background in just a moment. Uh, one of the things I'm, uh, I think, well known for is I like to start meetings on time. And so please help me uh, keep that uh, tradition in place. I like to respect people's time and, and keep things running as we say they uh, will run. Uh, so this evening you're going to see somewhat of an assembly uh, format. We have assemblies in here, so all the students and faculty come here uh, each Monday. And we typically have a speaker. This week, incidentally, we had uh, an interesting assembly in that um, three of our seniors were selected to read uh, their college essays. And, and they were selected out of the, most of the class submitted their essays. And the three uh, essays the college counseling office felt were the best. Uh, those students read their essays and we had a panel that was in the center of the theater here and judged which essay was the best. It was really fun to see uh, almost 800 boys focused on that and, and really smart because writing a college essay is not an easy process and it's good to get that perspective about how to write about yourself and your experience. The essay that won, uh, a student uh, talked about his excitement, enthusiasm, anticipation of getting uh, his first car. And he was, you know, he thought he'd have some really cool car. And he got his mother's hand-me-down minivan. And uh, he talked about how the minivan sort of uh, was somewhat uh, a metaphor for who he is. Uh, so as I said, this is an assembly in the sense that you're going to uh, hear from uh, you can hear some music, uh, and in fact, I'll just ask them to come out now. The headmaster singers perform frequently at school. There are a lot of boys involved with music, jazz music, choral music, orchestral music. Uh, some of these guys are in their baseball uniform because they just finished a baseball game, and we're actually proud of that. Uh, we like to see the students do a variety of, of uh, activities at the school. And so this symbolically displays something that is meaningful to us. Uh, Mr. Matt Smith directs uh, the, the chorus. And uh, please join me in welcoming the NBA Headmaster Singers.
Thank you, Matt. Thanks to the Headmaster Singers. Uh, this is a short film about MBA, and uh, please enjoy it. So we wanted to bring you into the school a little bit with uh, that film. Uh, those are events that happened this year at school, uh, talks, music, uh, and, and, and we wanted to give you a sense of the variety of the school. My job now is to tell you a little bit about the school philosophically again and to, I think, reinforce some values, uh, some perspectives, uh, some conventions of the school that I think are really important. I said earlier I'd tell you a little bit more about myself. This is my 25th year at MBA. I uh, was, as I was sitting down, I was thinking I, I haven't been anywhere else besides my house, which is right across the street in the school for the last 48 hours. Uh, so I, I've literally lived in educational institutional, institutional housing for 43 years. It's not been a prison, it's been a great life. And uh, in some ways the students probably see a stereotype of me as opposed to the real me. Uh, I uh, grew up in, in New York. Uh, in Long Island in Queens uh, until I was 14 and my parents then moved to South Florida. Uh, neither parent finished high school. I joined an Episcopal church when I was about 16 and a counselor at the church suggested I apply to Swanee. It was the only college I ever knew anything about at the time. I applied early and went there. Uh, the rest is this life of looking very preppy, I'm sure, from your point of view, and the students thinking that, you know, this has been my world forever, but it's been an adopted world, and it's a world where I hope anybody can feel comfortable, and that'll be part of my theme here. I teach English as well as serve as headmaster. I start my mornings with 10 advisees. I'm very rooted in what is the, the life of the school, and I try to practice and model what I think is most important, and that is that our decisions and focus should be on the boys. We're excited to work with you and your sons. Tonight's session is intended to make you feel comfortable and more confident about this new journey and to assure you that we hope that we will do our best to meet and to exceed those dreams and expectations you and your sons have for this time at MBA. I often say that the experience at MBA is not about four or six years, but about a lifetime of skills and friendships and associations and connectedness. One of the critical topics for me to mention this evening is inclusivity and community. I hope you will begin to forge strong relationships with everyone in your class and at the school. We value all of you and believe we are a better school and community if there is genuine and conscientious effort to build these relationships and to value everyone. We are proud of 30 or more schools represented among you and the many zip codes you come from. All of you must help us to get to know and to care for one another. So begin tonight by introducing yourselves and forging that sense of community. I often say that it is not your last name or your previous school or your zip code that defines you at MBA. It is your work, your character, your decency, your understanding that there is something here much larger than yourself. And your son's job is to find and to cultivate those avenues that will reveal who he is and how he can better this experience and our school and community. You will have noticed how we began this program with music. We value all the boys' interests and talents at MBA, and it is woven into the school's culture that everything is important. The sense of hierarchy and importance at MBA is derived from our ideal of gentleman, scholar, athlete. One's integrity and compassion and kindness are paramount in this community. Secondly, we value academic and intellectual pursuits. Our students strive to be scholars and understand the significance of skills like writing and mathematics, critical thinking, curiosity, and imagination. We hope to equip your sons with abilities that will serve them in a world cluttered 
with information and technology, allowing them to find their own humanity and to meet any challenge thrust upon them. Additionally, your sons will be exposed to programs like entrepreneurship and digital recording and a host of opportunities offered through our Wilson grants, as well as the chance to know and to spend time with the many exchange students who come to MBA from around the world. Finally, we believe in extracurricular involvement, particularly physical exercise and team sports. We also understand this kind of engagement can happen in a jazz band, on a debate team, in science Olympiad, or chess, or through programs like Best Buddies, or our many other service programs. You are entering MBA at a time when the school will focus on wellness and well-being, mentally, emotionally, physically. We're doing a lot of building. I am sure you noticed the construction on the MBA campus. We are excited about our new wellness center, scheduled to be open in January of 2021, and a space that will almost double the square footage on the campus. We are also building cabins and an outdoor gym and amphitheater at our Long Mountain property. You are entering MBA at a historic time. The opportunities we will be able to offer with these new facilities are amazing. But I assure you that nothing is greater than the hard work, creativity, and purposefulness and intentionality that emanate from our students and faculty and staff. We need your sons to focus on being better people in this world. Individuals who embrace all races, religions, communities, and who simply want to make this world a better place. Students who will make a difference in the realms of arts, technology, service, athletics, etc. And we hope that we will find ways to be multi-players in this community by investing themselves in service, athletics, music, etc. all in the same year. Too often I see individuals narrowing and not expanding their horizons. This weekend I spoke with one of our parents whose son is on the varsity baseball team. His son missed Friday's game because he was participating in a jazz festival with our band. To realize his son's enthusiasm about music and baseball, as well as to know his appreciation for academics, all made me very proud to be part of this community. Lastly, I believe it is important and meaningful time to be at a boys' school. I love the friendship and camaraderie among our students. I appreciate their focus and their hard work. I know that they understand that our highest priority at MBA is to build a better man and the kind of person and citizen who will understand that he is entering a very different and fast-paced world where men in particular must learn to work with everyone else to express the dignity of every person's worth and to show respect and understanding for women in particular. Last year, I wrote an op-ed piece about the world needing more gentlemen, young men who understand there is nothing as strong as true gentleness and nothing as gentle and kind as real strength. We hope to imbue those values in your sons, and we look forward to being partners with you in this journey. Well, finally, I probably just want to add that I, I think I'm very approachable. I'm here, uh, as I said, in the classroom with the boys in the morning. I see a lot of parents as I walk around the campus in the morning and afternoon. And incidentally, pa parents are very important partners at MBA. They're here a lot on the campus. Uh, we enjoy that partnership. And we think that we understand uh, our different roles. And, and we, we've had a very healthy relationship with our families. And we certainly want to continue that, to build that relationship with you. We try to involve our families 
in a lot of what goes on here. I send weekly reports about what happens in assembly because we know boys are relatively monosyllabic and when they come home on Monday evenings we want you to be able to ask them what happened in assembly, what was that college essay uh, like today. Uh, we really enjoy parents reading the all school read uh, that we uh, choose each year and this year's all school read is the book Endurance about the journey of Shackleton in Antarctica. And I think you'll love reading that book and it'll be a good way to kind of be, partake in the community of MBA. You'll hear from me a lot more. I'm now going to turn it over to Mark Artisan, who's the Director of Technology. You'll notice that we all are really involved with the boys, as I said. I teach, I'm advisor. Mark is an advisor. He's coach of the shotgun team. Uh, he loves probably being around the boys as much as anything else. Join me in welcoming Mark Artisan. Good evening. I'd like to take a few minutes to answer some questions that are frequently asked by parents of incoming students. Email. If your son is entering MBA as a high school student, he will receive from me a letter in the mail with uh, his MBA username and instructions on how to change his password and log into his MBA email account. He'll be able to do that as soon as he gets the letter from me, which I will send out in the next month. If your son is entering MBA as a junior school student, he will receive his email address either in the summer computer classes, if he's signed up to take those, or at registration in August. This morning, incoming parent email addresses were added to the existing parents of the class of email groups. If you are a parent whose son is joining a class that is currently attending MBA, you will begin to see our regular communications with parents of the class that he is joining. While we like for you to see how we communicate with our families, please know that the information is intended for parents of students currently enrolled at MBA. You do not need to have your son here in coat and tie for graduation next month, despite an email telling you to do so. <coughs> Coaches will email parents of incoming junior school students and high school students directly with information about the upcoming seasons. Instructions on completing your son's health information online will also be sent via email in the coming month. Scholar is our online learning management system accessed by logging into the MBA website. Parents have already been issued credentials and used them during the admissions process. If you have any trouble logging in, please contact Kit Lechleiter and she will be very happy to assist you. All incoming students will receive their scholar login information either during computer class in the summer or during registration week in August. While you will find plenty of information on our website about the upcoming school year, no information is published in Scholar until registration week. Once registration week arrives, you will be able to see your son's schedule and teachers. Once classes begin, you will also see his assignments and grades. Laptops are used frequently in high school, but not as much in the junior school. My suggestion is to consider providing one to a student entering high school and to evaluate the need of a student entering junior school over the first quarter or semester and then make a decision. MBA is a BYOD school, we are bring your own device school, so your son may use any laptop that he would like. And finally, you may have heard about the opportunity for rising seventh grade boys to travel to St. John together this summer. I've led this trip three times and can tell you that it is an amazing trip and a fun way to meet some new classmates. Matt Smith, who was out here earlier directing the Headmaster Singers, is leading the trip this summer and holding an information meeting next, month, next Monday at 6 p.m. in the Dead Poet Society room. If you are interested, please plan to attend as spots do go quickly. I look forward to working with you and your sons as they begin their journey on the hill. Welcome to MBA. Roll red. I think I'm up next. Um, 
I, I started looking around and Mr. Joy and Mr. Stewart and everybody left me. I was just up here by myself. All of a sudden I had this vision of uh, watching that, uh, have you seen the two-man show with Martin Short and Steve Martin, you know? And I, I was waiting for somebody to jump out behind me and uh, scare me like uh, Steve Martin does uh, Martin Short on there. So. Um, I was telling the group earlier when I was uh, when I first came in here. I was a little worried that uh, it was going to uh, smell like paint fumes in here, and everybody was going to be uh, uh, kind of ditzy. Uh, this this room, as Brad said, gets used a lot, and this will be transformed right after this event tonight into our prom venue uh, for Saturday night, and the uh, uh, presentations will be uh, going through and everything. The uh, artwork that's going to be taking up that whole wall is behind this wall right now and I, I do smell it. I, uh, believe me, it's got a lot of uh, paint fumes coming off of it. So what I thought that I would do real quickly before I turn everybody loose is to let you know a little bit about um, <clears throat> your son's incoming classes. Um, we have boys coming in new this year, whether it is uh, seventh grade, eighth grade, ninth grade, 11th grade. Uh, we have boys coming in from 35 uh, different schools this year. Uh, 18 of those are public schools, uh, 16 of those are private schools, and we have one uh, young man coming in homeschool. Um, that's from 23 unique zip codes this year in three uh, states outside the state of Tennessee. So we're really, really proud of uh, the fact that we've got uh, boys and families uh, coming in from so many different places. And, and uh, I hope you heard what, what Brad was saying a few minutes ago. The community here is, is really strong. And I'm so glad you guys are going to be a part of it and be able to add to that community. And please welcome folks who are coming in from out of state or coming from schools where, uh, you know, your son may be the only person coming from. I was that uh, in that situation 16 years ago. And I, I know how much this community meant uh, to my son coming in and how much, the, much they meant to um, uh, my family. Um, the rest of what I'm going to talk about is kind of what you're going to be doing tonight, but also kind of a, uh, a stream of consciousness as I wrote bullet points down. Uh, you're going to continue to get some informational emails from me. They may not be every Thursday, but uh, some uh, when, when I've gotten quite a bit of information that uh, I feel like maybe you haven't gotten through uh, what Mark was just talking about on parent emails, uh, I'll just blast that out to you. I'll try not to fill up your inbox and everything, but uh, we'll send you some of that. Um, these folders you guys have in your hands tonight are great resources. Uh, we don't expect you to go through all of that tonight, but uh, go home and go through every page of those uh, uh, those folders. They have a lot of great information about timelines and, and uh, what's coming up. Um, the website, as Mark said, is also a great resource for you. Uh, go down through there, through the website. You're going to find things coming up soon. New parent information. That will be a tab that will stay, uh, will live right under the admissions page uh, for at least uh, the next couple of months. And then it'll move um, over to our opening of school uh, tab, and you'll see that tab coming up. So watch that website. Um, use that uh, folder that you've got uh, there as well. Um, you're going to get a, a letter, your son's going to get a letter, um, from us uh, in the next few days. And uh, there's a present for your son in there from us, from MBA. Uh, and there's also instructions about a hopes and dreams letter that we would like him to write. And uh, he will um, give that back to us here at MBA, and Mr. Joyo will read all of those, and he will actually, uh, uh, it, that'll be significant uh, in the years to come, that we'd kind of like to know what his hopes and dreams are uh, while he is uh, at MBA. Um, morning transportation. If any of you are coming from out of town, we have three bus routes. I've got information in your packet about that, and um, that might help some of you if you're coming in from uh, the east side or from uh, Laverne, uh, Antioch area, or Brentwood, or the Franklin area. So take a look at that if you're interested in it, uh, whether it's a full-time basis or on an occasional basis. Um, I say that tonight is kind of that night that um, um, Kit and I kind of turn you guys over to the school, uh, but we've got one more event and we'll have one more uh, kind of uh, uh, time for that as well, which is coming up on 
Thursday, August the 8th. That is going to be for you, but it's also going to be for your sons, and it's an orientation dinner. You'll have an opportunity to break out into small groups and um, kind of learn about the nuts and bolts of each day, and your son is going to uh, be able to um, kind of get a good orientation uh, meeting on that. Uh, if you have not turned in an information sheet yet, uh, please do that just as soon as you can. I've got a pile of them out on the registration table. You could just grab one of those tonight if you want. And uh, get those back to us. You can email them to us. Uh, you can mail it to us. Uh, take a picture and send uh, and text me. Um, so whatever you need to do on that, just please get that information sheet. Uh, Kit gets those entered, and it uh, it really helps if we get those in now uh, before we're ready to move on uh, to the next step. Um, <clears throat> In a few minutes, we're going to split up, but uh, I know Mark Tips is going to uh, speak to the uh, uh, folks coming in the junior school, as is uh, Fran. And so uh, I'm going to turn this over to Mark and them in just a few minutes. But uh, a couple of other um, things. If you applied for financial aid, uh, you uh, will be receiving that information. You can always call me to find out what your financial aid package is. Everyone should start, uh, well, really should uh, receive your invoice from the finance office uh, coming up mid-April. Uh, and uh, I think those are going out uh, for the most part on financial aid side anyway, uh, uh, April 15th and everybody else's is going out shortly after that. Uh, that'll have the invoice um, and it will have um, the payment method that you chose when you filled out the contract. It'll have it broken out that way, whether it's one, two, or ten payments. And if you need to change those, it's a good thing to do that just as soon as you get it. If you say, oh, there's no way I, I, I want to do this in one payment, I want to spread it over two or whatever, that way we can do that quickly before that June 1st rolls around, because at that point, uh, the, making those changes becomes a little more pro problematic. Um, lastly, I want to say that after we're uh, finished tonight, when you're finished, whether you're uh, going with the high school uh, um, uh, faculty or you're staying here, after we're finished, the Big Red store is open until, uh, I guess, about 9 o'clock. Uh, and uh, so you're welcome to go over there and uh, get anything you'd like from the Big Red store. So. Um, Again, tonight's a great night to be able to get a lot of good information about what's coming up uh, over the next month or so. And uh, you, But you're welcome to continue to ask any questions of me, ask any questions of Kit. We'll direct you to the right person uh, if we don't know the answer. So at this time, Kit, did I leave anything out? All right. So uh, at this time, what we'd like to do, if your son is coming into the high school uh, this year, uh, Dr. Tim Boyd, and Robert Sawyer. We're going to escort you guys over to the Pfeffer um, uh, Lecture Hall over in the Ingram building. And so I'll let you guys go ahead and get up and uh, head that direction. <laughs> See you in just a minute. By the way, Mark, the agenda said I would finish at 7.35. Look at time. <laughs> um, everyone else, um, you're going to be right in here with us, and I uh, would like to turn this over for a couple of minutes. You're going to hear from uh, our director of athletics and from our junior school director. And so I'm going to turn this over to start uh, to our athletics director, uh, Mark Tips, and he's going to talk with you for just a few minutes about the athletics program and then you're going to hear from Fran Stewart. Thanks. Thanks. Good evening and welcome. I, uh, before I start, there's a few announcements I want to get out of the way. We will provide physicals for your sons. MBA does that at no cost to you. Um, there will be an email going out sometime in the next few weeks and probably will set a date around our graduation date, towards the end of May, uh, maybe a week before that. And so you can bring your son, get a free physical. All the boys have to get them. You don't have to. You can go to your pediatrician or you can do both. But we'll be sending uh, some information about that soon. Secondly, as seventh graders, your boys will take PE classes. And we provide them with uh, clothes for that, t-shirt, 
shorts, that sort of thing. And so you're going to get around May 1 an email uh, probably from Ms. Dreyer, who I'll introduce to you in a minute, and you'll need to order that, uh, uh, those clothes. And if you decide you need more, there will be a flash store we'll set up later in the, in the earlier in the year uh, once they get here and you can buy more clothes at that point. But the first group of clothes you get free and that email will go out probably about May 1. And then finally, let's see, is Roddy Story here anywhere? I don't see him. Okay. Um, he may show up before we leave tonight. So let me start uh, talking to you just a little bit about uh, our athletics component here at MBA. Uh, my name is Mark Tipps. I'm the athletics director. I also teach American government. I teach economics to seniors. I also coach seventh grade football, and I'm one of the assistant coaches on varsity baseball. Um, I work in the athletics department with Amanda Dreyer, who sits right over here. Wave. Here you go. And Amanda is actually the person who runs the athletics department. She is the brains behind it. I take the credit for it. She keeps me out of trouble and does a phenomenal job, and she is a pleasure to work with. And she is also someone who your boys will interact with a great deal, and she is extremely kind and sweet to them when they come and say, Ms. Dreher, can I switch sports? And she'll say, of course you can, and we'll work with them. So she does that every day, and we'll be here after we end tonight to answer any questions that you have about anything, okay? I got the MBA four years ago. I spent 30 years as a trial lawyer here in Nashville and in politics in Washington. And I hit a place where after 30 years I decided that fighting about money and uh, things of that nature were not the kinds of things that were lasting. They were not the things that endured in life. And when I thought about the things that did endure, I always thought back to my coaches and my teachers that I had in high school in college, and so I decided maybe I should think about that. Brad Joy and I had been friends for many years. My son graduated from here in 2015, and so after he graduated, I came here. And my goal and what I try to do here is to shape and mold young men, and it's been a lot of fun doing it. I have two daughters who went to Harpeth Hall. One's a lawyer here in town. One is in her third year of medical school, and my son is now a senior at Middlebury College up in New England. He majors in neuroscience, plays baseball, and he hopes to also go to medical school. So I've been where you are, both here and over at Harpeth Hall, and I'm going to give you a little bit of the benefit of being old and gray uh, in a few minutes when I talk to you about some advice about the athletic side of what your kids are getting ready to do. Very quickly, Brad mentioned that our motto is Gentleman Scholar Athlete. It's in that order for a reason. That is the order that we prefer. Athletics are important at MBA, they are far from being the most important thing. And while championships are nice and we have won our fair share of them, they are not that important either. And in the end, what is most important is the sense of community and the sense of mutual respect and the sense of value that I think we try to instill in these boys. When I grew up in the 1970s, I went to a huge public high school in St. Paul, Minnesota. Um, I was not as mature as these kids are today. It was a different time. I played football, basketball, and baseball, and I hung around with guys who played football, basketball, and baseball. And I didn't go watch plays, and I didn't go watch music, and I didn't see a lot of value in any of it. And I wasn't very smart till I got in my late 20s. And what I love about this school is that we take these boys starting at the age of your kids and we begin to make them realize that it doesn't matter what you do. Everything that your kids do has value. And what I love to see are our football players go supporting the cross country team when they run in the cross country regionals or the state and our baseball and basketball players going to the theater productions and the art shows and the music these kids learn at this school to value each other and to value their contributions, whether they're on a playing field or on a theater stage or in some other venue. And that is, I think, probably one of the best things about this school. Um, in junior school, we have four sports seasons. That's a little weird. All of you are probably used to having three sports seasons, but we belong to a conference that allows 
two winter seasons so that your boys could actually play basketball and they could play soccer or they could play basketball and also wrestle. So there's four seasons. There was a time when we made the boys play a sport in every season. We don't. They do have to have something to do every season, but that something might be debate or it might be working on a play or something else. We strongly encourage that they play as many sports as possible, and I'm going to talk about that in just a second. And along those lines, Ms. Dreyer will send out probably along about August 1, is that about right? An email to you all that will say, please select the sports your boys are going to play or the activities they're going to participate in for the whole year. And that will blow many of you away because you will be going, I have no idea what he's going to do in the spring. It's okay, just fill something out. Some of these kids will change three or four times and that's perfectly okay. But go ahead and fill that out when you get it so we have some idea of who's coming down the pike and what particular sports. Now I want to kind of get to the advice piece of this, if I can, if you'll permit me to. Junior school is two years. They are little boys at this point, getting ready to become young men. I would implore you to let your kids explore as many sports as possible. Let them play as many sports as possible. Participation is key, not whether they're winning, and failure is okay. We make a huge mistake, and I'm as, as much at fault as any parent in this room, of insulating our kids from failure. Failure is critical. I can go story after story of boys. I'll give you a couple of examples. There was a boy in my son's class who was a baseball player until he didn't make the team in 10th grade. He also played basketball and he decided to run cross country. And by the time he was a senior, he was a state champion in cross country. Who knew? There's a boy who went on and played football at the University of Tennessee. But when he came here, he was a basketball player except that he weighed about 260 pounds by the time he was in eighth grade. Basketball was a little tough. He won, he won two state wrestling championships when he switched over to wrestling and wrestled for the rest of his time here. Um, my son played football and baseball, but for seventh, eighth, and ninth grade, he also wrestled. And then he had to make a decision. I'm either gaining weight or I'm not gonna gain weight. And I'm gonna keep wrestling. But those three years were amazing years. He learned so much about physical and mental toughness. And he would tell you today if he were here that the toughest things Middlebury can throw at him academically or athletically doesn't compare to what he learned in wrestling with Coach Simpson. Let them participate in lots of sports. There are so many life lessons they will learn if you'll do that. Kids just turn out differently than you think they're going to. And I know many of you think that your sons are going to be the best blank. And you've already started them down that path. I get it. I understand. There's a lot of pressure out there to do that. And I want to talk to you for just a second about the dangers of travel team and AAU sports and select teams. When I was growing up, there was a band called Credence Clearwater Revival, and they had a song that some of you may remember called, I See a Bad Moon Rising. And I see a bad moon rising. Travel sports and AAU sports and this club select sports, I predict in the next couple of decades, will kill off high school sports. And that'll be a tragedy. Here, we're going to insist that your kids participate at, M at MBA with MBA boys on MBA sports. We can't stop you from doing the other teams on the outside. I coached travel baseball for four years. I get it. I know its place, and there is a place for it. But there are dangers to it as well. And those dangers are this. You're funneling your kids too early when you start them in fifth or sixth or seventh grade, and you tell them this is the sport you're going to play, and this is the sport you're going to excel at, because they may not. And then when they don't make that team in 10th grade, their world is blown apart. And to what end, by the way, are we doing all this? I've been here four years. We've had five boys that I can count, Amanda can correct me if I'm wrong, who have been paid 
and who have earned an athletic scholarship and been paid money to go play sports at a major Division I institution, five in four years. It's 1% of our kids or less. And yet I see things about travel teams. My favorite is the travel baseball brochure that said, 10 and under team, if your kid wants to make it to the next level, he must be on this team. 2,000 bucks a year to be on this team. And it made me sit and ask this question, what is the next level for a 10 year old? Isn't it being 11? But people flock to those teams because they're so afraid that their kids aren't going to be the best if they don't. And in the end, I'm afraid that what we do is burn them out. I see a lot of kids quitting sports in 11th grade because they've been doing the same thing over and over again for so long. There are studies out there that will tell you kids are more than twice as likely to have a repetitive stress <coughs> injuries from playing one sport all the time. If you're a Vanderbilt baseball fan, you know Tim Corbin looks for multi-sport athletes for the simple reason that he knows a kid who's been down in Florida playing baseball year-round for 10 years, his arm isn't going to last. He won't make it through four years of an SEC season. So there's a lot of reasons not to funnel your kids into one sport. We have a passion here, something Ms. Dreyer and I work really closely on, and it's this. Your kids can take their sport and they can use it to leverage themselves into admission into some of the best academic schools in this country. They are not major Division I programs. Most of them are Division III schools. And to do that, you don't have to play that sport year round. We have boys playing at places like Columbia and Princeton and Washington and Lee and Middlebury and Wesleyan and Hamilton and MIT and Pomona and Georgetown. None of those are in any Power Five conference. None of those kids are getting an athletic scholarship. But their sport here at MBA is one of the primary reasons they gained admission. So that's something that we focus on big time. The last thing as I end, I'm going to tell you that concerns me about funneling kids into one sport at an early age is this. I am the worst at this of anybody in here, so let me just make that clear. We as parents tell our kids nowadays that all of the world, all of the world and all of life is about your happiness. It is about you being happy. And that is doing them a disservice. And when we put them in one sport and tell them they're going to be the next great fill in the blank, we're telling them this is all about you. And it is a me, me, me problem. These kids need to learn self-sacrifice, they need to learn to do things for other people. They need to learn to be a part of something that's bigger than themselves. And the way you do that is be on team sports and be on as many of them as you can. So I'm going to urge you to just be reasonable. When you come, tell us if your kid's playing on a travel team or if he's got some AAU team. We will work with you on that. We will do things to help make life more flexible but we ask that in return, you have a little reasonableness too. Because what will happen is after I finish tonight, several of you will come up and go, I really enjoyed your talk. Can I ask you a question? My son, I heard all that. By the way, I agree with it 100%. <laughs> but Johnny, <laughs> yeah, he is going to be a great golfer. And we really need to keep doing four days a week with the golf guy. So can he get, you know, can he get... Uh, an exemption from all, no, he cannot, okay? We will work with you to make something work, but it is critical that he have, has time to spend with his classmates here. It is critical that he learns how to fail. It is critical that he learns how to play some other sports. Trust me, it will make him a better person. And if he's meant to be a great golfer, he will be a better golfer because he plays other sports. So with that, I'm gonna end and turn it over to uh, uh, Fran, I, I will tell you this, our door in the athletics department is always open and we will stick around here tonight and answer questions as long as any of you want to ask us questions. 
Uh, I do want to just read out loud. I can't possibly remember all these. We, uh, we offer so many offerings and athletic offerings and other offerings now. Just to give you an idea though, here's what we offer now in the junior school. Crew, cross country, debate, football, golf, hockey, rifle, robotics, tennis, intramural, soccer, swim and dive, wrestling, basketball, bowling, math counts, junior school play, science olympiad, chess, baseball, lacrosse, track and field. Half those things weren't invented when I went to high school. Your kids have a lot of great choices. Let them get in there and have some fun with it, okay? Look forward to meeting you all. Thanks. Thank you, Mark. You ready to get started? Oh. I am Fran Stewart, and I am the director of the junior school. That's kind of like the principal for the littler boys, okay? Um, I will be your guide, your shoulder, your sounding board. Uh, if you want to scream, you will. Uh, and over the next two years. Uh, I want to introduce you to our team first. In the junior school, you have me. My door is always open. Mr. Joya lives, lives 27 feet closer to the school than I do, okay? And I've only I've been on his same schedule for the last 48 hours too, so I'm always here. I'm on the other side of campus. You also have Mr. Patrick Simpson. Pa Patrick, he is our Dean of Students in the uh, junior school and he works really closely with the boys. I teach math. Mr. Simpson teaches history. You may have met Mr. Ms. Hindle. She was out in the um, registering you and getting you in today. If not, she's the one that's, that's the voice you're going to hear when you call the junior school office. When the boys get settled here in August, they will have an advisor. And they will have that advisor for two years. And so that's where they will start every morning. So between the four of us, uh, we got eyes everywhere, okay? And so, and we want to be a resource for you too. So remember that, okay? We're just going to get started tonight. This is the beginning. This is our first steps. There's a lot to take in, and I know you want to get it right. Just take a deep breath. Let me give you some perspective, okay? Uh, first of all, this is my 47th year in junior school, okay? Uh, so I, and I fell in love with this age group several years ago, and so I really like this chaos, this transition, uh, this magic time with your boys. The perspective is that tonight you're going to go home to this really sweet little boy. Kind of sweet anyway. He's going to smell good. You might even get to kiss him goodnight. Uh, you know, you might get a cuddle. You might even get a little hug. Uh, little attitude might be showing, but not much. You know, he's still kind of going to be sweet, okay? Two years from now, two years from now, He's going to be getting ready to go with me on a trip where we're going to celebrate his finishing junior school and he will already be packed and ready to go to high school. Okay? So, moms don't cry. It's two years. But that's kind of the perspective, okay? That child you're going to go home to tonight is going to look different. He's going to smell different. And he's going to sound different over the next two years. And if you can remember back, uh, we have a baby in the audience, and that's great. Your child is going to change as much with us as he did the first three years of his life, okay? So just kind of put that in perspective. And we're all here in it together. And I always tell this to new parents. If somebody tells you that they went through it and they didn't, then it was all roses, then they're just telling you a fa fable, okay? Because uh, it's just a different time, and so we're all here together. So what I wanted to do tonight was just to get us started. It, we truly mean that the door is open. Parents are always welcome. You've heard about the packet. That packet is important. You don't have to memorize it tonight. I'm going to tell you what you do first, okay? Is that fair enough? But just study. If you don't understand something in there, email me. Uh, Call the junior school office. I'll call you back. We'll walk you through this, okay? It's not that hard, but it's a little overwhelming, okay, for tonight. Uh, so we're going to talk about just getting the, just the very basics of, of uh, MBA, kind of, we call it the 101 piece. Going to talk a little bit about course assignments. You've already heard about junior school athletics, okay? 
So let's get started. Okay. The calendar. Okay. Have you heard about the MBA calendar? It's pretty deep, isn't it? When I first started working, uh, at, this is my 10th year at MBA. When I first started working at MBA, my husband asked me to bring my calendar home or email it to him and I said, well, he didn't have that many gigabytes and I didn't have that big a box, okay? So uh, it's kind of complicated, not complicated, but it's busy. And the reason I put it up here first is that you are in, coming into another organization. You've been in another school for several years, maybe even six years, okay? And maybe you got used to every third uh, week in January going skiing or, you know, the family reunion, not only, the only time they can get, to weather, get together is the first uh, Friday in February or something. There's going to be some conflicts, okay? So kind of go through your calendar now and just realize that there's just every day at MBA is really a day. And so just kind of work through that, okay? And don't let Aunt Matilda's next 88th birthday slip up on you, okay? And these are the emails I, I hate to get. You know, I just bought this $5,000 ticket. And uh, would you please excuse my child for a week while we go to fill in the blank, okay? Uh, so it is complicated, and so please look at that now, because I hate to say no, and I hate to say unexcused, but it, it's fast-paced, and when they do miss, I mean, they do miss something, okay? So get your calendar lined up. If you have a huge conflict, like Mr. Tip said, we'll work with you, okay? But please, okay, look at your calendar, okay? Look at this, when you, whatever you're doing. The website is where all the information is. And so if you have not gone to the website since you've got into the admission process, please take some time to play around with it because it's, it's updated, it's there. Uh, you're gonna see, uh, we, we sign up now online for everything, so please look at the website. Uh, emails, you heard that a lot. Some of you have been bombarded from admissions. Well, you're about to get bombarded more, okay? Because we, we probably over-communicate a little bit, but we send out a parent uh, message every week. Uh, we update the website. We send out other particular things when it's going on, like um, this is not my only big event this week. On Thursday morning at 7 a.m., I will get in, uh, I will take uh, the entire eighth grade to uh, Atlanta for three days. We do nothing but play. Anything you learn is purely accidental, okay? So we just play. So we paintball, we baseball, we race cars, we go to Six Flags. And I'm telling you this because that takes a lot of communication and so we email all those directions so you'll get information like that. Um, also in your booklet, You'll get another one of this in your packet. There's also a little packet, a little book that's called the 411. That's kind of the junior school distilled for you. So you don't have to go through that big handbook right away. So just take a minute to look at that. Uh, answer your emails. Watch your emails. Don't just put us in that we'll see you later pile, okay? Because uh, we really do use the email. Scholar is that thing that you have been using for admissions. Now you're going to use it to watch your son's grades and to uh, receive their report card, okay? We'll talk about how to watch grades as you get into this process. Mr. Tibbs didn't tell you uh, about sort of the medical forms, but they're in there. Uh, your child does have to have a physical, uh, and it has to be in a certain time frame, and that information is in there. And they also have, we have to ha collect their new immunization records. That information is also in there and you submit those. Uh, it, well, it tells you how to in your packet. So just, uh, if you had a, a physical, you know, last spring, um, it has to be very current within this year, okay? So just put that on your, on your um, to-do list, okay? Uh, we've talked a little bit about attendance. Um, we did have a flu outbreak and we got a little bit, we don't have many boys absent here and I think that's for a couple of reasons. I think they like being here to be, you know, I really do. But they know that every day counts. There's not a down day at MBA. They're just not. And um, 
uh, and they're not, uh, they're fast paced, they're exhilarating, uh, we, we really uh, pack a lot into our days and so, uh, t but if you have to be absent, we, we do a thriving business in dental work, everybody gets braces in junior schools, so uh, there are all those appointments, we have our own corner of the world on allergies and whatever and so Miss Hindle in the junior school office, you can certainly come in and get them and take them for those kinds of things and, and simply email us when they're absent, uh, when they're sick and so that's all in your little packet there so it's very easy. Technology, uh, Mr. Uh, Artisan talked to you about that. Seventh and eighth grade, they're barely able to keep up with their underwear, okay? And then that's a little gross, but that makes a point, right? Okay? Uh, and it's not too far from the truth because I have a whole collection of shoes, one shoe, okay? <laughs> one shoe, okay? Uh, so I would hold off the best time to buy the technology is, is the beginning of high school. In, in, in junior school, it's not, not allowed, you can certainly do that, but it's something else to break, to lose, and to be distracted by, okay? Typically, they're just not mature enough to use it for a task, okay? That doesn't mean that your child's not the exception, like the golfer or something, but uh, it could happen, I'm just telling you, um, they will not be the only boy not to have a computer in the seventh grade, okay? Uh, classes. Uh, let's talk about classes for just a second. Uh, in math and science, um, we do a placement. And this is not about your gene pool, okay? This is not about what Harvard wants, and Harvard doesn't know this, okay? It's, it's about where we take, we want your, your child to be as successful and start where they need to start in those two areas, okay? So in math, we do a placement test, and if you do not take the placement test, that's fine, they will start in pre-algebra, okay? If you think they are ready for pre-algebra honors or algebra one, then there is a, 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 a sheet of paper in your uh, packet that tells you how to schedule the placement test. We give it, uh, there's three days that we give it. One is all day, it's a Saturday. Uh, if none of that works for you, we'll work around it, okay? Most boys start with pre-algebra. A few are ready for pre-algebra honors, and then we have you know, less than 10% that usually start in algebra one, okay? It is not indicative of whether or not they're gonna be valedictorian in high, in high school, I promise you, okay? This is a starting point. We don't track every year um, based on their grades. Every January, we select classes for the next year. And in um, math and science in junior school, they're honors levels, and that's based on just their grades. So if they're in a regular class and they want to move to an honors level and they have the grades, then that will happen, okay? So it's, it's but we've got to have a starting point, and we want them to start wherever uh, they need to be. And really, the math and science piece, we teach introductory physical science. Have you heard about introductory physical science in the urban legends out there? Okay. Okay. It is hard. Let me tell you why it's hard, though. Let me tell you the secret. It's, it's a little hard because it is the first time in a long time your son will have to learn something from scratch. Okay? They've had some background and, you know, they've read some stuff. They've, they've, you know, diagrammed a few sentences. They know a little math, you know, that kind of stuff. But IPS looks really foreign to them. So they have to really dig into something that they've never heard of before, okay? And if you're as old as I am, none of you are, but if you were as old, uh, you would, that would have been what you had in college. Most of you, what I had in college, some of you would have gotten that, uh, you know, maybe in high school, I don't know. But it's, it's hard, but it's not impossible, it's just hard because it's new, okay? Sometimes the best way to explain it is that, say, so you got a new video game, how do you learn the video game? You don't know anything about that program. And they can tell you all kinds of things about that, okay? So that's the only place that it's hard. Everybody doesn't fail, but it is the one where they really have to dig in to really learn, okay? So IPS, so does that help a little bit?
So if you do not want them to take the placement test, that's fine. Or they don't want to. Uh, they'll go into pre-algebra. If they knock the top out of pre-algebra, then they'll go into Algebra 1 honors the next year. It does not compromise at all where they end up in high school. Okay? So that's by that part. Uh, the next part is that uh, we talked a little bit about the classes and in seventh grade, most of you are in seventh grade, they're going to have English, then they're going to have grammar, and grammar is where they're going to do all that vocabulary and diagramming. Then they're going to have, they're going to study U.S. history and they're going to have IPS science and they're going to have fitness. That's, that's the other required course. We split the English with the, that's the literature base with the grammar vocabulary. In the eighth grade, you keep English. We have a three new eighth grade families. Who are my eighth grade families? Anybody here? There they are. Okay, in eighth grade, we get English and we, we pick up Latin one instead of grammar. Then we have cultural geography. We have either algebra one or geometry in the math. And then we have earth science for the science. And all of this is in your pamphlet, okay, in your uh, folder. And then we put in uh, some, uh, those are those, I'm going to click through because we're going to, in the visual and performing arts, okay. There are two tracks for that, okay, and the two tracks are music and that would be singers and you're going to get, a, you're going to get an op opportunity in your packet to choose, okay. You could be in the music whether you're singers or in orchestra or in jazz band and it tells you how to audition for those. If they don't do that, then you're going to be in uh, theater, you're going to be in speech and you're going to be in art, okay. And those go for a quarter. Uh, if you are in theater, you have a quarter of theater, a quarter of art, and a quarter of speech. If you're in the music, then you will have that all year long, but you'll just have it every other day, okay? It switches in eighth grade because those, the music classes, if they continue, are all year long, so they meet every day. So if you're in jazz band in the eighth grade, you'll be in jazz band every day. If you are not in the music singers or orchestra part in the eighth grade, then you will be in theater one semester and art the second semester, okay? Uh, if in the summer you can take, we do require a computer class, uh, and that's what Mr. Artisan was talking about. You can sign up for that this summer, and if you don't have to, but if you do, that frees up one space for an extra study hall in the seventh grade. If not, it will be a quarter class. So if you would, you would take it, you know, after you finished theater, art, uh, and uh, speech. And so you would, the fourth quarter would be uh, the computer class, okay? If you're in the music part in seventh grade, then you would take it on those alternate days that you have study hall, okay? Does that help a little bit? Okay. Uh, again, that's in your packet. You'll be getting email reminders when we need things. So that's why I'm telling you to look for your email. Okay. Uh, and we get through these. I'm sorry, I didn't know. Okay. There's a sample schedule in there, just so that you can see how it flows out. We have eight periods. We have eight periods. This is in your, they're big color. You have the same ones in your packet. We have eight periods and, and we rotate our periods. So we have eight and then uh, on Monday we have A, A, B, C, D, E, F, and G uh, and H. And then we start with, we just rotate them like a wave all the way through so that uh, except for the fourth, fifth, and sixth period, which are labeled blocks, D, E, and F, and you don't have to memorize that, the boys have figured this out, okay? Uh, they rotate so that they don't have the same period, the same class eighth period every week, okay? They don't have the same period, the same class at the first of the day. And so this is the first year we've done that and it's worked out uh, really well. But and uh, there's a sample seventh grade schedule for the visual and performing arts with the uh, courses put in there. And there's also one for the eighth grade, just so you can see how that fits. So basically what you're going to have is that you're going to have your five core subjects. You're going to have uh, lunch, 
okay? You can have a visual, we have one period, which is always uh, the fourth period, or block D. We, we eat by ourselves. Nobody wants to eat with us. Uh, no, that's not true. We, we just eat first, okay? And then we have a study hall block, and then we have a block for the arts, visual and performing arts. So that's kind of easy, okay? The only choices that you're going to have coming up for seventh grade is do you want to do the placement test, okay? If you don't do the placement test, then we'll go into pre-algebra regular. If you do, then they will either go into honors or if they make that, they'll either go into regular pre-algebra, honors pre-algebra or algebra one, okay? So, does that help a little bit? Okay. Uh, and there's a sample eighth grade schedule in there. Okay, during the summer, uh, there's several MBA summer programs, and you can find all of those on the website. We have something called Wilson Summer Classes, and they're open to you. Uh, that is not the all school read. The all school read is, it should have been changed. The all school read is called endurance, okay? It's called endurance. The required summer reading, the middle of a, the middle of May, if you go to the website, there will be a button that says summer reading, okay? And you'll click on there and it says grade. And so you'll see what the summer reading requirements are. Usually it's three books and it's something uh, and it will tell you what they want you to do with the books, okay? Whether it's they have a choice, uh, write a little essay, do a model, do a character analysis, something like that, okay? But endurance is the all school read. Uh, now, you remember he said that the next time that you're going to be together is August 8th when we have a, a new parent picnic? And you're going to come, and what that's going to be is that some of the older parents are going to be with you, you and they're going to meet with the, in, you're going to meet in the advisor with the advisors, and they're going to kind of give you the parent perspective. This is a time to ask some more questions. Okay, I will have the boys that night, and we will begin our first piece of orientation. Mainly, we're going to talk about going to Long Mountain. Okay. Long Mountain is a campus about 90 minutes away from here. It belongs to MBA, uh, and it's beautiful, okay? So I'm going to take your boys away if that's okay. We're going to leave early in the morning, like 7 a.m., and I'm going to bring them back about midnight, okay? And we call it Dancing with the Stars because we have an observatory there, okay? And it is, it is one of the best observatories in the southeast, okay? We'll take an astronomer with us, and during the day, we're going to fish, we're going to canoe, we're going to hike, we're going to do the high ropes, we're going to get dirty, we're going to get stinky, we're going to eat a lot, and then we're going to open, we're going to be with the astronomer too, and he's going to talk about astronomy, and, the, and then if the sky cooperates, we were literally going to dance with the stars. We're going to open up the observatory and walk through the night sky. Now, all of this is just starting to get to know the boys, okay? I'll take a lot of the staff with us. We'll have a full day up on the mountains, uh, and I hope you won't worry too much. We've always brought them all back, okay? Uh, they'll be very tired, and they'll be very dirty, and you might as well get used to that. We always bring them back tired and dirty, okay? Uh, and that's the beginning of our adventure together. Long Mountain is absolutely gorgeous. It's just outside of McMinnville. Uh, we have lakes, we have uh, hiking trails, we have a ropes course. Uh, Mr. Doya told you that they're now building cabins. Uh, they're building cabins and we're putting yurts up there, okay? So uh, we're going to get an, uh, an airnasium that's all under construction right now. But we have a great time up there. Uh, we walk out in the dark. So if you've never been in the dark with 125 boys, uh, it's pretty interesting, okay? Uh, we have a good time, okay? A lot of good times at MBA. So, we come back, you bring them back the end of that week in their coat and tie on Friday, and that's registration, okay? And that's when we get our schedules, that's when they get their pictures done, that's when we get ready to start, okay? And then, just after the dust settles, we go to Camp Laney. So, September 11th through 13th, we're going to go to Camp Laney. Camp Laney, you, some of you know because you've been there before, it's in Mintown, Alabama. It's a boys' camp. It's only us for those days. And uh, we will go up there 
uh, we will stay in the cabins. Uh, we'll have about 12 boys in the cabin. This again is sort of beginning to break down all of those old places and when we say when we come down to when we come down that mountain we're one okay we're all MBA okay and so we will have three days on the mountains on the mountain we will do uh, a high ropes course we will build boats and float them across the river my team won last year no pressure uh, <laughs> um, first time my boat didn't sink you know so we, but we did win so it's fun uh, we do. We bring in a, an adventure, a high adventures crew. So uh, they're professionals. They're really good, and so we do team building. Uh, we we uh, team building skills. They learn about uh, kind of working together. That's why the high ropes are kind of really neat to do that. We have six stations they go through, uh, and then we build the boats the last day. And always we eat a lot. Okay, uh, boys want to know two things usually: when when do we eat and when do we eat next? Okay. So uh, we got that down, okay? So Camp Laney. And then uh, we're ready to start after that, okay? Um, I want to thank you for choosing MBA. I want to thank you for giving us your sons. We look at this as a, as a six-year intimate relationship and a lifelong relationship, okay? This week, we mourn the loss of two of our alums. Uh, tomorrow morning, we will lower our flags to honor our alums that passed away this week. Uh, I tell you this, not it is sad, but you're always our boys are always part of us, okay? Um, one of our alums was 64. One was uh, in his 30s, okay? Uh, the boys, some of those uh, some of the people speaking, most of them were, the older boys were alums coming back to share. Uh, so this, we think of this as something that goes on for a lifetime, but certainly going to be very intimate for the next six years and really intimate for the next two years because it's just a, it's just a beautiful time. It's really exciting. I hope that you will enjoy watching your son develop. I hope that you will appreciate the, those changes, even when they feel, when you don't recognize that person. I always say that my son went into the bathroom one morning and he came out somebody I didn't recognize, okay? Um, they, they change quickly, and um, it's, it's, it's really neat. It's a, and we are very privileged to be part of that process. And just, just kind of reminding you that uh, I'm the director. Uh, I do live 27 feet further away from the school than Mr. Joya, uh, so I'm here all the time. Uh, I do welcome you dropping in for coffee. Parents are important. Uh, Mr. Simpson is here. Uh, Patrick went to MBA. Uh, he uh, went to West Point. He's a re he was a rest he's a wrestler. He's a wrestling coach. Miss Hendel uh, can do anything. Okay, uh, she can, can she can bandage it. Uh, find it, lose it, uh, whatever you need to do. Uh, so she's right there, and then your son's advisor will be somebody that you'll want to know too, okay? So you have lots of support. So tonight, all you need to worry about, you don't need to worry about anything, okay? Because we got this, okay? But keep that packet, keep, put it somewhere, go through it. If you have questions, I'm here tonight, I'll be here tomorrow, uh, I'll be here most of the summer. Uh, pick up the phone and call, email me. Um, there will become a time when you'll want me to tell your son something that you don't want to tell him, okay? And I'll be happy to do that. Kind of uh, in the vein of Mr. Tips, kind of the best advice I can give you now is to prepare just to take a deep breath Know that your son's going to change, that this is new, okay? That, um, and our goal is going to be to take your son and help him to become more autonomous, okay? Yes, I'm the mom of a son and a daughter, okay? And uh, they just made me a grandparent, both of them at the same time almost, which is a little overwhelming. Uh, but my, kind of my first reaction was, how was I going to manage those grandchildren? Well, you know, they're not my children, you know? But that was kind of my first, er, er, you know, how am I going to get them in college? And where are they going to go to school? And, you know, those kind of things. Um, so that is a natural tendency, okay? 
but they can do it. So if you can just, it's kind of like running a bicycle, you've been holding on to the bicycle, now just walk beside it. Is that fair enough? Okay. And it tips over, let it tip over once, not in the big boulders, but if it's just a little gravel on the street, let it fall over, because that's the way we learn to get up and ride again, okay? Uh, junior school, don't tell your sons this, but it's, it's, a, it's a really good place to fail. And we need to learn from that. We need to own that, and we need to look at other options. There's going to be lots of folks to help them through that failure. Uh, it's a lot of. It's a really good place to try out things, new sports, new activities. Okay, so just be open to that. Let them explore a little bit. Hold your breath and trust a little bit. Don't check their grades every day. Okay, if their grades are really in that much trouble, we'll call you. Okay because uh, they're going to go up and down like my bank account, okay? So uh, just hold on. If you get real nervous, don't shake around your son. Come in and shake around me, okay? And we'll, we'll walk through that, okay? Mr. Tips will too. Again, thank you. It really is an honor to have your sons. MBA is a great place for boys. Thank you. One quick announcement, if I could, I'd, I'd, earlier I'd ask if Roddy Story was here, he's here. Roddy is the head coach of our seventh grade football team. Uh, anywhere from a third to a half of our incoming seventh graders will try out for football, so we always have a lot of questions about football. Should, should my son do that? The answer is yes. It's a great experience and it's a great way for them to get to know kids. And so we thought it would be great if he could be here tonight. So he will be here when we break. If any of you have any questions whatsoever about seventh grade football, the process about seventh grade football, please come down and ask Roddy. Thanks. The Big Red Store is open tonight from 9. It's also open every Friday. Uh, so if you 